Hi, student. So um, beginning this week, we're going to be going through a, a long evolution and uh, kind of a graduated training and art appreciation uh, journey through drawing, through art history, and all, also through an appreciation uh, of line at a very, very exquisite level. So we are all going to become connoisseurs of line by studying master drawing. In just about any artist's training, artists in classical music or sculpture or any other medium, especially drawing and painting, we all go through um, sort of like an apprenticeship in which we really look at the past, look at the great works that have been done and see what we can take from them. Uh, Picasso was quoted as, as saying, well, yeah, I do steal, but I steal from the best. And that's true. Uh, so this week we're going to be stealing from the best uh, in the form of continuation drawing. And like I said, all artists stand on the shoulders of previous generations and uh, learn something from the past, add their own personalities, and then carry things forward into their own work. The exception being Leonardo da Vinci, who did look at the past, but then absolutely reinvented painting, also <laughs> reinvented uh, engineering, uh, invented movable bridges, uh, helicopters, submarines, and uh, articles of, of, uh, or equipment uh, for warfare, which, uh, which kept the money coming. But anyway, uh, our specialty will be um, learning from great artists uh, in a process called continuation drawing, which is really, really interesting. This is as close as you can get uh, to, uh, in classical music, putting a sheet of Bach putting a sheet of Mozart in front of you and learning, learning the notes, but also learning the style. So in order to play Bach, you have to, you have to move your hand like Bach moved. You have to bow like Bach did, or it won't sound like Bach. And then you can't play Bach like you would play uh, Philip Glass or, or, or Corelli. They all have their flavor, their personality, and uh, all of the rich things that they have added uh, to to the next level of their art. And so here's one of the 18 drawings that I've sent you. This particular drawing is by an artist named uh, Egon Schiele. Uh, Egon Schiele was a German expressionist, and German expressionism in painting and drawing and all forms of art um, is a great example of how science and art move together through history hand in hand. Uh, Egon Schiele was classically trained at some point, he was academically trained, but in this age of, of uh, a new type of expression in all of the arts, um, Egon Schiele injected a, a very particular Im intense emotion into his drawings and paintings. The, um, the focus here was less on perfectly accurate description and a little bit more on rich emotional content. It's interesting to note that German Expressionism came about uh, in Vienna around the same time Freud was developing his theories of psychoanalysis. And so you can see in this drawing, there's really a psychoanalytic kind of uh, kind of leaning to this drawing. It's it's a very, very intense emotional portrait. And uh, its line quality is absolutely beautiful. But you can see when you start uh, working on your drawings that you're not just copying lines, you're copying a rich vocabulary of lines. And like I said before, um, as this process we're in evolves, I want you guys to have uh, an, a vocabulary of lines closer to Shakespeare's vocabulary of 28,500 words, more or less. So you can see that some of these lines were done with the side of this drawing medium, probably pencil or, or charcoal. Um, some are very, very soft expressions. Some are much more sharp. Uh, there is actually uh, a bunch of the things we've already talked about. There is a certain sense of atmospheric 
perspective. These lines here in the foreground are very, very sharp and dense. Some of these little wisps in the background are softer. So uh, even in this one little portrait, there is a sense of space. And uh, and you can see the, the, the degree of dance. There's an accuracy, but there is also just an emotional uh, rhythm and dance to these lines. So um, let's get going with the process of continuation drawing. So I'm going to take this drawing, uh, which I've sent to you, and you can print out. And I'm simply going to split it in half. I'm going to take my see-through ruler here and divide this drawing right down the middle. And I'm using the back of my drawing board as a cutting board. And so next step, you want to take either half of the drawing. It doesn't matter. You can use the right or the left half. And you can see here I've put four pieces of double stick tape on the back, although if you don't have that, uh, you can use regular invisible tape. But you can see that it's taped on four sides because you want especially the, the center, the center line, to be nice and tight to your drawing surface. So here I've backed off a bit and you can see uh, how the drawing sits on an 18 by 24 um, drawing pad, and you can see that we can easily fit one, two, three, four of these larger drawings or a bunch of the smaller drawings on the same page. So um, for all of the uh, learning that you get out of it, you can get an awful lot out of a single page. And then in the final step, you want to take the, the piece that's free, and you can use that as a guide to fill in the other half of this drawing. So you want to continue this drawing so that you end up with Sheila's side and your version of Sheila's side, but you want to be very, very faithful to his line language. So you really, really have to study these touches and these marks on the paper and these very, very, very specific strokes. Um, you may have to get a piece of scrap paper or a piece of newsprint, you may have to try this little figure several times before you get it right. Or this these little swishes of hair, they have a very, very particular quality to them. Um, in order to uh, get the facial features to line up, you may want to take a lighter pencil and just kind of give yourself some very, very soft guidelines. You can also take your pencil, use it as a, a measuring device, and give yourself little marks. Or you can use a ruler. You can actually measure from here to here and say, okay, her face is just about there. So you can see I'm giving myself a bunch of really kind of critical little marks, and these marks are called pentimenti by um, art historians. So you can give yourself some little guidelines that are very carefully measured before you go in and put your final lines in. So it's a great process and again it's a way of almost having Egon Sheila guide your hand and and to be your drawing teacher for this particular drawing. It's a fascinating process. And you can see here this is a finished completion drawing um, of a drawing originally made by Pablo Picasso you can see that this is Picasso's original side. The drawing's been cut in half, pasted down on a piece of paper. And his drawing, his ideas, his touch on the page, his line language uh, has been faithfully adapted by one of my students from last semester. So it's, it's as if she put Picasso on a music stand and played Picasso in the style of Picasso. Just like if you were a classical musician you would uh, you would put a sheet music from uh, well in, in Picasso's case maybe Manuel de Falla some some great Spanish composer and really really followed his emotional ideas and his technical touch.